Hey everyone, welcome back to Avenue with Genghis. Just got this in the old inbox. Battle of Austerlitz, Major League, aka Battle of Shallans. For those that don't know, this is a team all-star championship. So what better time to get to the Mount Rushmore of alliances in Ebony. Now, this is my opinion. The top four most important, most dominant alliances in the history of Ebony. So this is not going to be an alliance that's a flash in the pan. There's going to be four alliances, just like there's four presidents on Mount Rushmore in North Dakota. Let's get to it. Now, while choosing these alliances, I kind of narrowed it down to about seven or eight that I felt were far and away better than the rest of the field. And then I spoke with some other Avani veterans, kind of went over them. I also wanted to get a wide array of eras represented on this. So that means an alliance in C5 that maybe won one Shalons. It's kind of hard to include them in a list of all-time great. And then at the, at the opposite end... People have a lifespan in Ebony. They only play for a couple years or an alliance can only really sustain greatness for a couple years for the most part because it's expensive and it's hard to stay on top and Battlefield wasn't really a thing in Ebony for about two or three years and then it just kind of blew up and became the main part of the game. So without further ado, I think there is no better place to start on this Mount Rushmore, then Neff. Full disclosure, old alliance of mine, Nefarious, hated by many in the game. Absolutely. Why are they hated? In my opinion, it's because they don't have any standout players. Like, sure, they do have really good players. 13, Mini Mags, Huntress, lot, uh, lots of new names in there now. Jim Sack, JT, Pig, can't forget the Pig. Phoebe, Mike, and so many more. But the fact is, they, I think they just got their first VIP 22 ever just really recently. For a long time, they were just dominating with VIP 18 and 19s. And people don't like that when they're competing against them. Also, Neff has uh, some disadvantages that really went against them you know they they only stayed on c2 for a very small amount of time and that's when c2 was the oldest continent i uh, i remember i was on that server and after like eight months or 10 months we merged to c1 to someone who was five years old and then there was three major alliances including Neff, so they didn't even dominate the server and yet they were still dominating battlefields so a big disadvantage there where other people they were up against you know you don't have to share monsters that sort of stuff but another thing Neff really did early on they really pioneered sending like 10 players to every single all-stars and really that's kind of I what can only imagine what Neff's record what their trophy case would look like if they got a true run at c2 if they got to stay there for two years and got to play against servers their own age rather than getting merged against servers five years older than them when they did. One drawback for Ebony or for Neff in Ebony that people would say is no banners. They never won a Shalons. But Neff was number one in BOC, BOG, and SVS all at the same time. And there was that, I think it was season, season four Battle of Shalons where... Some stuff happened. Neff had a 100,000 point lead with about 30 minutes to go. And then all of a sudden, one team chose to give all their points to a different alliance. And Neff ended up in second place. So to me, I consider that they were victorious in that one. It's too bad Ebony couldn't hand out dual banners for it. But I hold nothing against Neff in that. Neff's always been in the finals in Shalons and sometimes... It, luck just doesn't go your way but they're definitely deserving to be on it only seems natural that we would leave server 68 where neff was and head to server 164 and visit hot known as pegasus to no one they are known as hot to everybody and they are dominant when they first came to c1 the landscape changed and no one else had a chance. Let's look at this alliance, 652 billion. Lots of names that people recognize here, Kingster and Shaq being the most famous ones, Dan the Man, so many good players. Names have changed over the years as they do in all alliances, but dominance has remained the theme here. This alliance changed the game. 
People had to start recruiting to keep up with them. They had to start getting big spenders from other servers and got them to join up in their alliance because without it, you couldn't keep up with these guys. These guys had the biggest wallets and very good gameplay and very good builds, so much so that people said they had to push the boundaries in spending just to keep up with them. And people like to say that these are Ebony developers. That's how dominant these guys are, that they think it can't possibly be an even playing field, that these guys are so far ahead of everybody. It's only now in the past few months that other alliances have finally caught up to them. But that is the life of Ebony. It's hard to stay on top forever because it is an expensive hobby. But these guys dominated like no one else. And when you see other alliances that you face in Battlefield, it's like, wow, look at this all-star lineup. Thank these guys for this. Because these guys brought in an era of recruiting. But no Mount Rushmore would be complete without HOT on. Our next stop on the mountain is server 821, representing the new guys. And what a fitting description for WDF winning team. That's right, those gold wings around that peacock means they won. Not only did they win Shallans this time, I don't think they've ever lost a Shallans. I think they've won every single C4 Shallans that's ever existed. They've won four in a row for sure, and it might be five in a row. And these guys are dominant. They have Black Sheep and Cream and King of Splat, but T-Biz is probably one their most well-known player. But if we look at the season rankings here, you can see that they are number one. And probably more impressive, if you go to season rankings for C4, they got T-Biz at 10, and then they got Cream at 30, and then it's quite a big drop-off before you get to more players. And that just goes to show you their depth, how well-rounded they are, their power size. It's big. They got players that are pushing 30 billion, but that's not that big for two years old. There's players that are much bigger on other alliances, but these guys are deep and they know how to play as a team. And obviously they are very dominant and I don't think anyone is looking forward to them moving up anytime soon to get to C3 and C2 and have to face no these team guys. is dominated like these guys. It's only fitting that these guys, as probably the best winning percentage of all time, are representing the new kids on the block. And rounding out our Mount Rushmore, our fourth team, we travel back in time to an older server. We are on server 302 RSP. Definitely a dominant alliance, one of the most well-known in the games, probably because they kind of broke in the era of live streaming battles. There were highlights here and there. There was all-star streams that were terrible and glitchy, but these guys actually started to stream their battles live and they were new and they were smaller. Back then, I think they were like 80 billion when other people were like 200 billion, but they were competing with people and they were dominant and they were fast and kind of teaching people how to play the game. And they're kind of a version of what if for Neff, for our first alliance that we showed, what if Neff got a beauty merge where they didn't have to fight for monsters on the server? They didn't have to have bubble or burn. This is an alliance that I thought kind of broke in the nap era in Ebony. Like people were like, what if a server gets along? Look how dominant you could be. And then they also got to stay on C2 forever. And they just now merged to C1, which is going to be super exciting to see them go up against GOT and HOT and NEF and many other great alliances in Shalons or whatever it's called now, Battle of Austerlitz. But these guys are so good that as the names change in the alliance, people pay to join this alliance just to have the old people play the account for them in Battlefield. These guys are definitely deserving to be on Mount Rushmore and I look forward to seeing how it ends up with so many of them ending up in C1 now and to see how those battles do take place. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. What alliances would you have put on your Mount Rushmore? Other alliances I did consider IFT early alliance. Colt, he was on my 
Mount Rushmore of players, the founder of that alliance. Man, if only he would have chose YouTube instead of Twitch, I think they would have been more famous. And they did win C1. Let me know in the comments section who you guys would choose for your Mount Rushmore. Other alliances I did consider was IFT. I had Colt from there on my Mount Rushmore of individual players. If only he chose YouTube instead of Twitch as his streaming platform, I think IFT would have been even more famous than they were for winning the first Battle of Shallans in all of Ebony. GOT is a big one. They have uh, one of the founding fathers of RSP there. Glorfindel is back and reinvigorating them. Then, of course, the flash in the pan DOA on uh, C5, I think it was, led by Spedlord the Great from uh, RSP as well, another breakaway player who left there and went to teach people how to play the game. But, uh, anyways, lots of great alliances. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Like, subscribe, leave a comment.